silent. This debate will come to order. The resolution before us today is that this house will censor violent video games. Representing the proposition are its first speaker, Brandon F., and second speaker, Stephen. Representing the opposition is first speaker, Ben, and the second speaker, David. On behalf of the House, I would like to express a sincere welcome to our judges, Cameron and Candace. I, Candace, am your moderator. Each speaker will deliver a four-minute constructive speech. The first speaker of each team will also get a two-minute summary and rebuttal speech. Points of information will be allowed during the constructive speeches only. But the first 30 seconds and last 30 seconds of your constructive speeches are protected. This means no points of information will be allowed. For each speech, 15 seconds of grace will be allowed, and after each speech, I will immediately, immediately call upon the next debater to begin his or her address. Are there any questions? No. I call this debate to an order. Um, I call upon the first speaker, the Prime Minister Brandon, for his first speech. Here, here. Whenever you're ready. Um, first of all, thank you for being here with us today. And um, so, our resolution would be this house would censor violent video games. So, we are defining censor as making it illegal and unattainable for kids under the age of 18. We are defining violence as a realistic simulation that has somebody hurting somebody else, whether or not it's a real person or just uh, the computer. And we're defining this house as the United States of America. So, um, on our side of the house, we like to live in a world where there is less violence for me. Children perform less violent acts. As you know, there have been quite a few shootings, school shootings in the US, and we believe that at least it's partially due to violent video games. So, I would first want to talk about um, that violent video games makes active violence acceptable, and then I'd like to talk about <coughs> how it causes kids to be more violent. So, yeah? Um, so you said that the shootings, you believe, were partly a cause of the violent video game. Do you think it was because uh, the, the violent tendencies that they, people could have after playing video games? Well, um, we'll bring up quite a few points about that, but I would say... We'll bring up quite a few points about that, but I would say it, it is a lot to do with the violence in the game. So my first point is, it makes them think violence is acceptable. So first of all, the games encourage violence, because to play the game you have to be violent, which can give the kids more of a violent mindset. And especially because younger kids learn a lot constantly, it will kind of ingrain it in their brains. And then it'll also make the kid think it's normal because not only they're doing it, but if they're playing multiplayer, they see all these other kids doing it, all these other people, like just a whole community of people doing it. And then my second point I'd like to bring up, it, it causes kids to be more violent. So I've seen recently as violent video games have become more common, we have seen an increase in school shootings and other acts of violence performed by children, and I at least partly think this is due to violent video games. And as I said, it also gives some ideas about being violent, because before, if they haven't played the video game, they might never have those ideas of doing any acts of violence in their head in the first place. But since they are playing the video games, it puts it in their head and like, oh, well, since all these other people are in the video game, maybe it is acceptable in society. And then, on video games, it's not like you're just killing a computer, but on multiplayer, you're actually killing other people. Like, not in real life, but there are real people behind the computer, and that may want to motivate the kids more to commit the acts of violence. Because if it's real people, it's not even that different from real life, especially as you can become more and more realistic, the difference for children between video games and real life becomes smaller and smaller. Thank you very much. I thank the speaker for their remarks. I now call upon the. What's the time? Uh, three minutes. Um, I now call upon the first opposition speaker to deliver their four minute constructive speech. Here, here. Thank you. 
um, uh, today I will attempt to refute what my opponent has said, add three constructive points of my own, talk a bit about what my partner will be saying, and try to convince you all that the house should not, in fact, censor violent video games. Uh, you said that it increases kids' violent tendencies if they're playing uh, violent video games. Scientific studies have proven that um, though it increases violent tendencies by a little bit, it's not nearly as much as you're making out. Um, second, you say it normalizes violence. I'll take you in a second. This isn't actually true because um, video games are still developing, the graphics are still developing, and as for now, it doesn't look quite as real as in real life. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you agree that school shootings have increased significantly since the rise of violent video games? Um, yes, but the rise of vi violent video games has also been a while ago. Uh, has been since a while ago. It's only since now, not uh, since like the past year, two years, that it started to increase. Um, so on to my first point. Violent video games um, are can be used as an outlet for people with violent tendencies, and usually violent tendencies are not because of video games. Um, using these as an outlet can actually prevent um, real life crimes. Uh, our second point is parent decision. Um, I'll take you in a minute. Parent, uh, we believe that they should not be illegal, but it's the parent's decision whether to tell their kids not to play these violent video games. If you, um, instead of making it completely illegal, if you make things illegal, it gives people more of an incentive to do them, as my partner will talk about later. So instead of making them illegal, we think that it should be up to the parents uh, to, to do what their kid to choose what is best for their kid. Yes. So you're saying how it's pretty, it it could be used as an outlet to um, like of their violent tendencies, but wouldn't you use it as an outlet, just put them in the habit of performing violence and then make it more likely them perform violence in real life? Um no I wouldn't say that because uh, I said outlet for violent tendencies. I should have said outlet for stress. Uh, so that was my mistake. I would say that no, uh, it wouldn't increase uh, vi uh, the point of a violent tendency as you're letting all of that um, tendency uh, out and all of that stress out into a video game where you can't really actually hurt anyone. Um, my third point is the marketing side. So if you take away these video games, uh, many marketing companies who make most of their money off of uh, violent video games would not completely go back bankrupt, but would not be better off. Um, so I think it's important for even the economy uh, to be better um, if we keep these violent video games. Um, my partner will talk a bit more about this kind of stuff, but this, but those reasons are why we think that uh, the host should not censor violent video games. Thank you. I thank the speaker for their remarks, and now call upon the second proposition speaker to deliver their constructive speech. Here, here. So, in my speech, I will try to refute. Um, side opposition points, um, rebuild my partner's points, and also talk about the impact that it has on society. So you have said that uh, the school shootings have only started to increase in the past few years, which I do agree. But I believe that, and you, uh, you said that violent video games have been here for a long time, making it not correlate. But I would disagree with that statement as only in the past couple of years, um, the, uh, uh, the graphics have greatly improved, making it more realistic, um, which is why I think the school shootings have been increased. Um, you have to uh, take uh, yes. Uh, so do you believe that uh, even if it's a, a video game that the more realistic it is, 
the more that it can lead to uh, violent tendencies? Yes, I do. I do think that uh, at the more realistic it is, the, uh, um, the more e the easier it is to become more acceptable in society and making it more normal as it looks more like a human being. Um, you have also said one second that um, it's the parent that it should be the parent's decision. Well, I would argue that uh, there are, there are certain cases, like in this case, that it shouldn't be the parent's decision. Such as, is it the parent's decision? for their kid to be able to have marijuana, right? Um, and I would say that no, it's not. Um, yes? Uh, so then uh, if uh, the more real it is, the more it could cause real life tendencies, then don't you think that a real life event would have more of a effect on them than uh, something like a video game? Um, I would say no, as um, the real life event, uh, they are not doing the actual violent Thing. It is, um, they're just hearing about it, and they're not actually committing the violent thing. So as my partner said, it normalizes violence, um, just making it increase, I'll take it in a second, um, and I would, and it, uh, violence in families will also increase. Uh, this would create more fights as the kids would lash out more as they're more violent, as well as the parent, um, parents being more concerned for their children's well-being playing these video games. Yes? Um, so what, uh, just like to ask, would you say that kids should be banned from watching the news because of this? Because the news can have a lot of violent things. As I said, um, I believe there are two different things as in the news, you, um, you are not actually committing that violent thing, whereas in the video game you are shooting the gun, uh, swinging the sword. And I think that makes a difference, as um, as it as it makes youth feel that I can do this in a video game, meaning I can do this in life. Um, thank you. I thank the speaker for their remarks. I now call upon the second opposition speaker to deliver the last speech on opposing this case. Uh, for my speech, I will start with a uh, refutation on uh, the proposition's points, as well as uh, rebuilding my partner's points, and also stating uh, a few points of my own. So, one of the a, one of the points that you had were uh, the more realistic that these video games have become, the more influence they have on uh, on um, kids. But we believe that this is not true because. Uh, even if it's uh, realistic, there is still a um, clear difference between what is real life and what is, uh, what is shown in a video game. And uh, we know that um, these kids do know the difference because you say that these kids are under the age of 18. I'll take you in a sec. Uh, this also includes kids that are 15, 16, 17, 18, who have their own ideas of what, uh, of what the difference is between video games and real life. Yes? yes but this also includes much younger kids, like kids who are let's say 12 or under or something around there, who might not yet have a clear idea of the difference between video games and real life. Yes, and we believe that uh, for kids that young, that it should be a parent's responsibility to restrict them uh, uh, from these games, uh, like my partner has said. Also, uh, you state that um, because of these video games, these kids lash out more, these kids uh, may, uh, it normalizes violence. But this could be uh, this could be to blame on ver uh, various other things, such as things like social media, where it normalizes a lot of other things that uh, could be uh, very harmful to the kids. Do you believe that this should also be um, this should also be banned, or something such as uh, as my partner mentioned in a PY that we believe is more important than news, where it's a real life event where um, these things are happening, where uh, it could. Um, it could also lead to increasing tendencies for a child. So uh, one of my point, uh, my first point is that this is uh, banning kids from these video games is not a solution to um, number one prevent them from playing them, but also just uh, causing their violent tendencies. Uh, as mentioned in my reputation, what else are you going to ban? And when you ban something from uh, when you ban something uh, ban something from an audience. That they um, that they that is very popular. You usually create more of an incentive to gain these things. 
So that could harm that could cause uh, more harm in the future. Uh, yes. Well, I do agree that it would increase incentive, but it is hard to get less children in total will have access to them, which will which will obviously diminish our the effect we've mentioned of violent video games. Uh, this is true that uh, it may create a less of an uh, audience for it, but um, as mentioned, we believe that many violent tendencies are not a uh, main cause of video games, so this would not do that much. Uh, as mentioned, for uh, to continue on to my point, uh, from the more incentive, it could be very easy for other people to exploit children, where uh, there could be uh, something like an example of the black market. Imagine how many uh, violent video games would be sold on this. People, uh, kids under the age of 18 do understand how um, many of these things work. It's not just 12-year-olds trying to play these games, trying to access these kids, these games. There's older kids that will be able to find a way that may be more harmful to them than actually playing the game, yes. So you have said that it's the parents' responsibility to make the decision. Oh. And, um, uh, yes, explain kids uh, to, um, to buy these games, which could lead to them uh, them charging way more for these video games, which could definitely harm children more than uh, something as just banning them. Yes, thank you. I thank the speaker for their remarks. I now call upon the leader of the opposition to give the first summary speech of this debate. Uh, thank you. So we think that because of all of these reasons, um, using violent video games as an outlet, we think it should be the parents' decision the marketing aspect. aspect. Um, it's easier to exploit kids to get those video games, more of an incentive to get those video games which could put them into greater harm than actually playing those video games. For those reasons, we think that um, censoring violent video games is a bad solution to stop kids' violent, violent incentives. Um, I think that if we were to find another solution other than censoring these violent video games, it would be much more beneficial than banning them and making them illegal altogether. I'd also like to ask the proposition, what lengths are you willing to take to enforce these rules? Because as my partner stated, there will be a much more of an incentive. So are you going to increase security? What are you going to do to ban these things? Um, all of these reasons and more are why we should not censor violent video games. Thank you. I thank the speaker for their remarks. We will now hear from the proposition's final summary speech delivered by the Prime Minister. Hear, hear. <laughs> okay, well, I would like to first um, start off by just thank you all for being here today. And um, my first point is the other side said the graphics currently aren't good enough, which I think is not true as graphics have significantly improved over the past few years. And for example, I played Battlefield 5 recently. The graphics are just mind blowing how realistic they are. And for a, real, for a younger child, I don't know if they can tell the difference. And you said it's useless and, and you said it's a parent's choice, but how much can we really trust parents, especially when some parents are just too busy to bother to like, interfere with what their children are doing. And he said um, companies make less money, which is not true because most of the profits made from buying video games are not from children under the age of 18. And you said that TV, that TV shows and news, like, they'll have violence, and why don't we censor that? Because there are already tons of regulations on them which actually prevent the, reg the violence from being displayed. And you also said, um, social media too, which is not true because obviously there's a lot of regulations and currently there's a lot of efforts under place to restrict violence on those networks. And um, you also said how what we would go to enforce it. So uh, to enforce it, we would basically, you have to, on most systems, you have to have an account. So when you put the disc in, the system will check if the account holder is old enough to play the game. If they aren't, the game can't be played. So we'd like to first um, remind you. So. We believe that um, five video games should not be should be censored because it makes kids think that it's acceptable to perform acts of violence in real life in society, and it causes kids to be more violent. And there's family issues because families may have arguments. So 
To summarize, this house believes violence video games should be censored. Thank you. I call this round to a close. I invite both sides to cross the floor and shake hands. And after that, please exit the room so that we can figure Don't out the winner.